Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full end-to-end -end review of the recently released Apollo Go electric scooter. Now when Apollo first announced the Go, I was really excited because they're essentially bringing to market a 46 pound dual motor electric scooter with a host of standard features that screams premium. And they do it while coming in at nearly seven pounds less than their closest competitor, the Segway 9Bot Max G2 all while bringing improved acceleration, higher top end speeds, better hill climbability, all while using a similarly sized battery. And with all of that, I knew I had to get my hands on one, so I went ahead and put in a pre-order, and three weeks later, the Apollo Go arrived at my doorstep, and over the last nearly 200 miles, I've been putting this scooter through a host of tests, uh, testing out hill climbability, uh, doing multiple range tests, riding this scooter to my local grocery store, and doing some grocery shopping. Uh, we've tested it all, and really, what I'm here to help you do is determine whether or not this is the right scooter for you and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So stay tuned while I unpackage the details and help you determine if this is a suitable fit for your next scooter. Now I want to call out that this is not a sponsored video. I actually bought the Apollo Go with my own money. Now, if after watching this review, you decide, you know what, maybe the Apollo Go is the right fit and you decide to make a purchase, consider using the links in the description below because they do help support this channel and they actually keep the wheels turning on future product reviews. So what's in the box? Well, one thing that Apollo does really well is the packaging of their products. The Go ships in form-fitting foam, minimizing the possibility of damage during transport. Included in the box is a complete toolkit, as well as replacement screws, bolts, and turn signal end caps in the event you need them in the future. Also included is a diagram of where each of those parts goes, which is a solid touch I have yet to see from other scooter companies. If you want the full details on the unboxing experience, I will include a link above as well as in the description. I'll also include a link to all the videos that I've done in the testing of this scooter. When it comes to design, I think Apollo knocked it out of the park with the go. From the pinstriped deck, handlebar latching mechanism, kicktail and stem integrated lighting, excellent cable management and smooth lines, Apollo left no stone unturned in delivering a stunning scooter design. In a market saturated with lookalikes, the Go rises above the rest. Now, in terms of speed and acceleration, I think this is one of the areas that the Go really shines. Thanks to its dual 350 watt brushless motor setup, with each motor peaking at 750 watts, the Go has no issues getting up to speed, topping out at 26 miles an hour on GPS. Acceleration is also on point, taking me from zero to 26 miles an hour in 12.31 seconds. These are significant performance boosts relative to its primary competitor, the Segway 9Bot Max G2, which tops out at 22 miles an hour and takes 13.35 seconds to reach 22 miles an hour from zero. For comparison, the Go reaches 22 miles an hour in 8.3 seconds, almost five seconds faster than the Max. G2. This faster acceleration makes it easier to get ahead of traffic and is a nice to have when navigating time sensitive scenarios. Throttle response is also on point, delivering one of the smoothest and highest resolution throttle feel I've ever tested on a scooter. Having high throttle resolution makes riding at incremental speeds a breeze. Powering the motors and the electrical system on the Apollo Go is a 36 volt, 15 amp hour UL certified lithium ion battery. The Go does come with a two amp charger, which means charging times from zero to 100% are gonna be approximately seven and a half hours. The Go also comes equipped with a battery management system that provides over 20 protections, helping to ensure maximum battery safety. Speaking of protection, the Go has a dust and water ingress rating of IP66, meaning it's resistant to dust and powerful water jets. I took the Go on a couple of rainy day rides and almost a month later, the scooter still rides like a champ. No issues at all whatsoever. With regards to range, Apollo does claim that the Go can get upwards of 44 miles on a single charge in the most conservative conditions with real world mileage anywhere from 20 to 30 miles. Remember that range depends on several variables from rider weight, 
riding surface, stop and go frequency, and weather conditions. What I get for range may very well be different from what you might get. For range tests, I actually tested the go in three different scenarios. In each of these, the payload was approximately 205 pounds. In scenario one, I mainly rode on flat ground, which did have a steep pedestrian bridge at the end, uh, and the road was comprised of 70% pavement and 30% dirt. I set the top speed for the ride to 20 miles an hour. In this test, I got 19.2 miles. In scenario two, I rode in sport mode, which is mode three, on mostly flat ground with lots of stop and go, heavy acceleration, and riding at or near top speeds. In this test, I could squeeze out 18.3 miles. Finally, in test three, I rode the Apollo Go up a mountain with 1,800 feet of elevation gain and got 15.3 miles of range on a single charge. With all that being said, lighter riders with less aggressive acceleration settings should be able to get more than 20 miles on a single charge. Most of my commutes are under 10 miles round trip, so for me, the Go perfectly meets my needs. Um, for some of you that are needing extended uh, ranges, anywhere from 30 to 40 miles, uh, you might want to consider something that's got a bigger battery. But for those of you who you know need 20 miles or less of round trip range, the Go could very well be a solid option for you. One of my favorite tests for any scooter is the hill climb test, and I think this is really where the Apollo Go shines. If you've watched any of my previous content, you'll know that I do a majority of my hill climb tests at South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. With its dual 350 watt and 750 watt peak motors, the Apollo Go has enough power to scale moderate to steep hills quickly. When comparing the Go to the Max G2, it could cruise at up to 10 miles an hour in sections of South Mountain where the G2 could only go 3 to 4 miles an hour. And here's the kicker. That's with the Go's top speed limited to 20 miles an hour. Had I set the limit to its full 28 miles an hour, I'd be able to tap into more power for even more robust performance. So if you have hills on your route, the Go should have no problem scaling them with its dual motor setup. If night riding is on the agenda, the Apollo Go is a lighting powerhouse. It comes equipped with handlebar mounted end cap LED turn signals that are very bright and easy to see at night. The Go also has turn signals integrated into the rear brake light and tail light combo for added nighttime visibility. The rear turn signals aren't the easiest things to see during the daytime, but are bright enough for night riding. My only suggestion to Apollo for future enhancements is to replace the hard plastic uh, turn signal end caps with maybe threaded clear silicone end caps that can do a better job of, of absorbing any kind of impact in the event that the scooter falls over. Now, in terms of seeing out in front of you at night, Apollo equipped the GOAT with a relatively strong front headlight, which provides decent illumination immediately in front of you, but not so much to the sides. Now, Apollo could have stopped here with the lighting and been like every other scooter company out there, but they didn't. They added a vertical stem mounted light strip that runs a good length of the stem. This light provides 180 degrees of visibility that, when combined with the headlight, provides the best standard front illumination I've ever seen on an electric scooter. You actually have the choice as to whether or not you want to ride with just the stem light, uh, the stem light and the headlight, the headlight without the stem light. Um, you can do anything you want with those lights, so it's nice that they built that functionality into there. Now, for me, I don't ride it all the time. I actually use it as an additional level of awareness when I'm you know, driving around at night and I see a car coming or a situation where more visibility might be needed. I'll turn on that uh, stem light. It's almost like turning on high beams. It's that strong, uh, but really nice thing to have for any kind of night riding. When it comes to handling, the Apollo Go is actually one of the most stable scooters I've ever had the pleasure of testing. Everything about the ride feels locked in. It all comes together from the stem height, rake angle, and extended deck length for a superb ride. Not that I would recommend this, but the Go is the only scooter I feel comfortable with momentarily taking my hand off the handlebar without fear of falling into a death wobble. Now, one thing to call out is that the Go does have narrower handlebars compared to some of its competitors. 
Before purchasing the Go, this was a point of concern for me. Surprisingly, I found the handlebar width to be perfect for this scooter, and that's coming from a guy who prefers wider handlebars. I don't know how they did it, but the narrow handlebars are a non-issue as they fit perfectly with the overall ride and feel of the scooter. Also, with narrower handlebars, it's gonna be a lot more portable and easier to fit into tighter spaces. One of the things I really love about the Apollo Go, and I'll be honest with you, I wasn't sure I was gonna love this or not, but it's the regenerative braking lever. When Apollo's chief technology officer mentioned in one of his Instagram posts that he almost exclusively uses the regenerative braking lever, I thought, mm, okay, that sounds like maybe a little bit of a stretch, but it's actually not. Now, it did take a bit to get used to, but the regen brake provides sufficient power for everyday stop and go. If you need extra braking power for an abrupt stop, you can always pull the manual brake lever to engage the rear drum and the dual regen brakes. Throughout my almost 200 miles of riding this scooter so far, I estimate that I use that regen braking lever as my primary method for braking about 95% of the time. When it comes to riding comfort, nothing helps ease the lumps and bumps in the road better than a full suspension. I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. If it's within the budget, I recommend buying a scooter with a suspension instead of a scooter without a suspension. Because I'll tell you what, the suspension makes the ride much more enjoyable, especially over longer distances and riding over rougher terrain. The Apollo Go has a standard coil spring suspension up front and a spring-loaded rubber block in the rear. This simple suspension setup allows for a smooth ride and minimal maintenance. The Go excels in traversing asphalt and paneled sidewalks and has just enough travel to dampen light to moderate bumps in the road. One thing I do want to call out is that I've noticed some squeaks develop from the front coil spring, especially when you're dealing with large swings in temperature. The good news here is that you can minimize some of the squeaking with uh, spray lubricant applied to the spring assembly under the front boot. Now I do want to mention that the suspension has enough travel for on-road commuting purposes as well as riding over grass, but I wouldn't recommend using this off the beaten path on anything more than a well-packed dirt path. If you need something that has off-road prowess, I would definitely look at scooters built for that purpose. When it comes to tires on scooters, bigger tires are generally better. Many of the GO's competitors come standard with 10-inch tires, whereas the GO comes with 9-inch tubeless pneumatic tires. So smaller than their competitors, so how do they perform? Well, one thing to mention is that the smaller tire size allows for reduced weight and a smaller overall scooter form factor. After extensively riding scooters with 10-inch tires, I'm happy to say that I haven't noticed a difference when riding around on 9s. All else being equal, 10-inch tires should be able to handle deeper ruts and more aggressive bumps in the road better relative to 9-inch tires. Still, after riding nearly 200 miles on the go, I haven't run into a situation where I was like, oh shucks, you know, I really wish I had 10-inch tires right now. So for me, the 9-inch tires are plenty sufficient for everyday riding and riding around the city. As for portability, the Apollo Go weighs in at 46 pounds, which is about seven, seven and a half pounds lighter than its biggest competitor, the Segway 9Bot Max G2. What's particularly impressive about this is that the Go is able to achieve this with not one, but two motors with a similarly sized battery. Seven and a half pounds might not seem like a lot, but when it comes to climbing flights of stairs, every pound matters. And as I mentioned before, the Go's narrower handlebars mean you can fit it in tighter places. It's more portable. If you're using this as a last mile commuting solution, you know, tucking it under the seat uh, of a bus or subway or whatever it is that you're riding will be a lot easier to manage. When it comes to electric scooters, I always appreciate a companion app because that means there's a possibility of customizing the ride experience. And the Apollo app does just that. You can set acceleration and brake strength, adjust cruise control and kickstart settings, plus a whole lot more. One thing I like about the app is that it allows you to set the top speed of each driving mode, which is a feature not commonly seen in electric scooters. With that being said, there is room for improvement, specifically around navigating around the app and the placement of the settings. There have also been times when using the app that I have struggled to connect to the scooter. Now, 
I don't know if anybody else has tried this, but when it is having issues connecting, all I do is jump into the iOS settings app and then immediately hop back into the Apollo app and then somehow, some way, miraculously, it connects and it connects 100% of the time using that kind of workaround. So hopefully Apollo can address that in future updates. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go into the things that I love and the things that I think can be improved with the Apollo Go. Number one is that the Go has excellent power and acceleration. The Go feels dialed in and has the right amount of power to get you out of hairy situations. Number two, the Go has unmatched nighttime visibility. This scooter's complement of lighting makes it nearly impossible to miss at night. The combination of the headlight and the powerful stem light means you're gonna have no issues seeing not only what's ahead of you at night, but what's also on your sides, which is an absolute must for any nighttime riding situations. Number three, the Go has an excellent overall ride and stability. I am 100% in control of this scooter in both slow and high speed scenarios. And this is a result of the well thought out geometry of this scooter. And you know, funny story, after riding the Go extensively, I decided to hop back on uh, my Segway 9Bot Max G2 to see how it compares. And immediately I thought something was loose with the scooter and hey, I love my Max G2 and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But when it comes to the fit and finish, uh, the Apollo Go is a step ahead. Number four, the Apollo app allows you to set the maximum speed of each of your drive modes. A lot of times electric scooters will come with like an eco mode that does, you know, six, seven, eight miles an hour and a, a middle range mode that goes 14 to 16 miles. I'm not interested in any of that. I want a little bit higher speeds in each of those modes and the Go affords me the ability to go in there and set the max speed uh, for all driving modes. So that is a huge plus in my book. And the fifth thing that I love about the Apollo Go is that regenerative braking lever. And I mentioned before, but I didn't think I was gonna be some huge fan of this. You know, I'm used to using the regular brake levers that scooters have, but this regenerative brake lever, in my opinion, is kind of addictive because it gets the job done. It also helps crank some juice back into your battery. The nice thing about having that regenerative brake lever is it means less wear and tear on your brakes, which means fewer uh, brake changes and less maintenance overall. So huge thumbs up to Apollo for that. Now onto the things that I think can use some improvement. Now the first thing on the list is range. Now the Apollo Go absolutely meets my needs in terms of uh, commuting, but there are many riders up there that may wanna go further. Now, with that being said, if your commutes are under 20 miles round trip, I think the Go could be a solid option. If you're looking to get something, you know, 30 miles plus round trip, you're probably gonna wanna look at a different scooter. Number two on my list is the squeaky front coil spring suspension. Now, this isn't a major issue for me. I mostly notice it uh, on cold starts. Cold starts being on cold days. You hop on the scooter, you hear a squeak and it squeaks for a little bit, and then it goes away as you ride. And as you slow down, come to a stop, you might hear the squeak again. Uh, you can help alleviate some of this squeakiness with some spray-on lubricant, which you can put under the boot. Number three on my list is gonna be the app performance. Performance. Overall, I love that they have an app and I love that they give uh, riders the opportunity to customize, basically fully customize the riding experience. The issue I have is the app isn't as intuitive as I think as it could be. Um, sometimes I find myself, you know, fishing around for settings and stuff like that. And I also run into issues connecting to the scooter. And as I mentioned before, if you're using an iOS device, if you see that it's in that connecting status for a long time, hop out of the app real quick, open up the uh, settings app on your iPhone, and then hop back to the Apollo app and it connects every single time. Hopefully they can fix that in a future firmware update. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but there is a workaround, so that's awesome. And finally, number four on my list of things that I think can improve is gonna be the ability to use accessories on this scooter. Now, I'm gonna say this for lack of a better term, but the Apollo Go has some of the girthiest handlebars I've ever seen on an electric scooter. 
Uh, you know, a lot of scooters out there use what appear to be like bicycle style handlebars. They're, they're very narrow, so it's very difficult, actually nearly impossible to find accessories that fit around uh, the limited space that you have to mount an accessory. So the stem is super thick. The handlebars are super thick. I don't know if Apollo makes like uh, handlebar mounting uh, accessories or anything like that. If they don't, they absolutely should because it appears that nobody else does um, I did you know think at the beginning hey you know you know those are there's very narrow uh, space for mounting things I'll just add uh, one of those uh, handlebar extenders on there I can't even get those uh, around that handlebar. Uh, good news here is that the uh, Apollo Go has a quad lock system for mounting your phone. Uh, I use this scooter on a regular basis, so I actually bought a case. I don't use the little adapter they include, I just bought a full case uh, because I use it so frequently. Uh, I just pop it on the quad lock and everything is good. So I'm happy that they added that, but it would be really nice to see a line of like accessories that they make that'll specifically handle this if they don't already. So now that we've gone over all of that, would I recommend the Apollo Go as your next commuter scooter? If you're okay with about 20 miles of real world range and are you know comfortable with the price tag, I absolutely recommend the Apollo Go. Even though I've only been able to get up to about 20 miles of range every single one of those miles in that 20 have been an absolute blast. The Apollo Go provides an outstanding balance of power, range, speed, acceleration, portability, hill climbability, as well as handling. And it also happens to be exquisitely designed and definitely stands out from a lot of the look-alike scooters that you see on the market today. And to be honest with you, the Go may also be one of the only scooters that makes me smile every time I ride it. Now, before I took delivery of my pre-order of the Go, I actually wrote an article on my blog, you can find it at tomsgadgetgarage.com, where I said that I think, based on the specs and everything that I've read about it, that Apollo has hit the ball out of the park with the Go. And after riding nearly 200 miles on this scooter, so far, I can say that is absolutely true. Now, after going over all of this, you decide, hey, you know what? The Apollo Go is a good fit for me. Uh, consider using the links in the description because as I mentioned before, they really do help support this channel. And more importantly, they help fund some of the future reviews that I'll be doing on this channel. Now, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, looking for any additional comparisons, let me know in the comments below. And just know that I'll be following up this full review with an extended review after I hit about 500 miles or so. So stay tuned for that. If you aren't subscribed already, uh, consider subscribing to my channel to get all of those updates. Now, if you've made it to the end, thank you so much for tolerating my voice. Unfortunately, a little over a month ago, I caught some nasty cold virus, which completely destroyed my voice and here we are a month later and I am still struggling. So I definitely took this opportunity to get this product review in now that I'm able to get some sentences together. Uh, so thank you uh, for you know hanging around this long. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.